I think to start with, um, Rudy's going to tell you uh, about some of his, his web stuff, and uh, I'll go down there and, and be running the, the demo stuff. And then I'll talk a little about uh, some four-dimensional stuff having to do with my new novel, Spaceland. And then we'll have a break, and then we're going to read this uh, cool story we wrote about Jenna and me, our Jenna and WAG. Okay. <laughs> All right, so um, uh, I'll give you a brief overview of how I got into this uh, making the first twin site. There's a, there's a picture up there on the upper right that my dad uh, mailed to me about uh, two years ago in the end of 1999. It was clipped from the National Enquirer. And there, there's a picture of Jenna there uh, getting sloshed at a frat party and uh, falling down on a friend. And, She's able to keep her cigarette and beer uh, perfectly level and intact. And uh, I saw that image and, uh, <laughs> and I thought, wow, it's a, you know, I'd like to clean her up with a scrub brush or something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so I, uh, I, I was just thinking about Jenna for a day and I'm like, well, it's, there's two of them, there's twins, and uh, the first family has never had twins before that I know. So I thought, wow, reserve the first twins.com. And then I, I made this site. And uh, uh, whenever there's a new image or story somewhere on the web, I completely rip it off, plagiarize it, copy it onto my site, and uh, often copy the original articles too, because things always disappear on the web. And uh, um, every now and then, if, there, if there's no news about Jenna, I throw in other info uh, that's vaguely related to keep the fans happy. Um, there's a, a lot of people that actually look at this site and uh, um, they think I'm a real dedicated, fanatical fan, which I am, more or less. But, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it started out, um, I was... I was just very obsessed for about half a year. I, I did it every day. <laughs> <laughs> I would update the site and find information. And um, uh, uh, let's see, it, I did different things. Like here's a photo here. There's a poll where you could uh, say which, you know, I asked which twin is which, and you could click and vote on uh, the left or the right twin was Jenna or Barbara, and uh, people got into that. Um, uh, so I had this site going, and then uh, <laughs> here some fan sent me a, uh, a That's picture you. of him. <laughs> and I, I, was trying to, I, I tried all these different uh, ideas. I worked for a couple of dot-coms in the dot-com era, so I, would try, I used those skills to try to um, spark uh, fan interest. Like, here's a photo of, a, of another fan. Why don't you send in your photo? But no one bit for that one. And um, I do some other things. Uh, like um, uh, sell mugs and uh, sell subscriptions to Hustler magazine and stuff like that to try to make money. There, websites have always had this, there's always been this question, how do you make money from your website? Well, I wasn't making any money and I didn't never really intended to make any money from it. Um, but I, I, I saw there's an opportunity to get to make like twenty or thirty dollars, so I so I went for it. I, I I sell these mugs that you can order online that say thefirsttwins.com. It's just pictures I ripped off from other uh, news sources, and um, you know this company makes them and I get two dollars profit and they they make it, print it, and collect the money and stuff like that. Uh, I had this site up for about half a year and. Uh, it was Yahoo's site of the day and got real popular. And that's um, right around then is when the, the government noticed that I had this site at all. Uh, they weren't really paying attention to it. And then the, the Secret Service got real excited. And uh, <laughs> they, they came and uh, paid me a visit. They were looking for my third eye. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, I, I wasn't there at the time, but they left a nice little business card uh, with this said the Secret Service, and then you were scrawled on it in the pen, please call me. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, I waited a day, I wasn't sure, and then, and then I went ahead and gave him a ring, and uh, he just asked real, uh, real simple questions uh, about the site and who I was and why I was doing it, and um, I answered them all. It was pretty, they were, the questions were pretty easy. 
it, it was fun uh, talking to them. Uh, it's fun to get real worked up about the, the government paying attention to your site. I mean, that's one of the reasons I made the site, is just to get it out there to a lot of people and stir up a little bit of trouble. I'm, I'm a site I don't take a, uh, any political stance. I'm more or less apolitical. Um, it's probably from my upbringing. Uh, it's sort of more of just a punk rock, uh, screw everything attitude. <laughs> uh, that's my father there who brought me up that way and my mother who's out there. <laughs> Um, there, there are some more mothers and fathers right there. Um, yeah, uh, so th the first twins has been great. I've, uh, I got to do a bunch of interviews with different radio stations and various uh, newspapers like the LA Times and the, the Metro uh, Weekly down in uh, San Jose. And, um, there was a period there for a couple of months in uh, the middle of, oh, I don't know, the year 2000, end of year 2000, where um, the the media would call me like every other day. And it's it exciting to sort of be able to jam on the media and, and tell them whatever the hell I wanted to tell them, and then they'd print it. I changed some of the facts, and uh, then they, those facts would show up in news sources, and then other news sources would quote those news sources. And, I started to realize the media is just this huge system of gossiping, and, um, and the main thing I learned was that uh, these these papers like the Chronicle and the Examiner, well maybe the Examiner, sorry, but the, the Chronicle and the New York Times uh, really uh, don't have a lot of interesting stuff, they're way too political, but if you go to the Inquirer or Star or Globe, there's all kinds of great articles. There's, uh, there's gossip, there's alien abductions, you know, there's all kinds of very interesting reading material. And, uh, yeah. Oh, here's a face flipper program that uh, my friend Karen wrote. Uh, she's in the audience. She's having a technical session uh, next month. But um, she, said she sent me this code. Well, actually, she just had it up on her server, and I thought it was interesting. So uh, um, I found that uh, she'd left a a copy of the source code on the server and I, I was able to steal the program from her and, uh, and then I, I rewrote it to have all the the different people that I wanted to be in the in the face flipper um, and uh, uh, it turns out that a day later Karen had lost her source code and then she emailed me and I sent her a copy of it <laughs> 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 but uh, it's good to have global web web-wide backups. Um, there's Chelsea. She's the oh, I can talk about the twins and the first daughters all day. This is my favorite topic, really. Um, there, there's Chelsea. She's been the the voted the, sec the sexiest woman uh, around these days um, by a, what was it? Uh, the Glamour magazine said she's really coming out of her shell now. Um, another news source said, well, maybe she's not. Um, the hottest, but uh, <laughs> there's this allure to dating someone who's the daughter of a former president, you know, especially as scandalous as Bill Clinton. She might have inherited some of his talents. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you never know. Go to Bat Boy. Oh, there's Noella. She, you, you all know about her. That's one of uh, Jenna and Barbara's cousins. Um, uh, she got busted for having Xanax, uh, no. common drug for coming down off ecstasy. You know, you're a little depressed. You take some Xanax, you feel fine. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, it's she she plays a very fat boy. Another reason to go to go to the tabloids. The tabloids are just you know they have they have things that make you laugh. None of this um, another person killed shit that makes you cry. Uh, <laughs> what was me? Uh, yeah, there's Barbara. Mm, baby. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I've, here, here I just took pictures of the uh, the television because I don't have any video capture methods, so I just use a digital camera. And you can click on that little arrow right there, and it, it shows a series of photos of Jenna getting um, when she got arrested for her uh, for drinking underage. And there she is, sad. There's the bar. There's what Mission Street looks like when you're tanked. I just added that in myself. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Uh, I was thinking of Bad Boy. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Bad Boy, yeah. Really.
So let's see, what else, what else is interesting on this site before, I, before I go on to bad trends? Yeah, the guest book is in, interesting. You get a real cross-section of what Americana, and not only Americana, but, uh, I don't know, Earthcana is thinking of. Um, whatever, uh, whatever people are writing about, uh, they, they reflect on the twins and about political events, and they post them here, and then people write back how, um, you know, you're full of shit and that. And, uh, um, guest books have always interested me, but I really hate moderating stuff. So I wrote a little program that takes all the posts and changes some of the words around just to keep it a little interesting. And uh, like, if you ever put in the word Republican, it changes it to elephant. If you put in the word Democrat, it changes it to donkey. If you put in um, fuck, it changes it to fark. If you put in, I don't know, cunt, it changes it to shoe. If you put in uh, uh, penis, it changes it to pencil. Just little things like that, just to, so I don't really have to monitor what's going on. That's actually what a, uh, um, brought around the Secret Service to my doorsteps. Someone posted a, a threatening thing on there that they wanted to kill Jenna. That was the reason they used to uh, come and, um, and find out what I was up to. But I traced back the post and it came from Washington, D.C. and I'm pretty sure that they posted it themselves, so it's whatever. Um, it, it, conspiracy. You, conspiracy. You might think I have a lot of conspiracy theories. And, uh, but let, let me start talking about the bad trans now. So enough on this. Uh, there's this there's this other uh, site that I made called uh, badtrans.monkeybrains.net, which you can't view right here. Oh, here's my ISP. But um, uh, I run a little ISP in town where people can do 56k dial-up or host websites, a la Laughing Squid style, or uh, co-locate their machines with me. Um, and uh, I've been doing that for a couple of years, so I don't actually have to work for anyone anymore. It's real nice. And that's why I have a lot of free time to stalk the twins and, <laughs> and uh, s stuff like that. I was voted the number one stalker site on the it's web for Jenna Barber. <laughs> 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 okay. okay, but uh, let's see. Um, uh, so I'm going to talk, uh, that's just real, I don't know, a bunch of caffeine affected ranting about the twins. I'm going to focus in now on uh, the bad trans virus. There's a virus that came out last fall that um, propagated from person to person. It was a worm style uh, virus, and uh, it would affect it would infect your computer and email itself to all the other people in your uh, in your uh, email address book. And then those computers in turn would get infected and would get passed on. You hear about these all the time in the news, and I've always heard about them, but I uh, I've never been involved in. Um, really involved in any of them. So uh, this one virus, the bad trans virus, the authors of it had this other feature inside of the virus where it would install itself and it would spread and then it would turn around and um, start, it would install another program that would log all your keystrokes. It would log everything that you wrote on your uh, computer, even stuff you erased that you didn't save to the hard disk, it would, it would log. So it's, it monitors every keystroke you hit. So you can write something like, I hate President Bush, and then erase it, and it would still get that, including all the backspaces. Or, you know, it could be, there's all kinds of things people write about. So all that data was stored and then sent back to one of 20 different uh, email addresses on the web. And it just so happened that one of those email addresses was on my servers. It was uh, suckmyprick at ijustgotfired.com. And uh, I noticed all this email coming in and it was bogging down my server, so I... Uh, um, I looked at the mailbox to see what was wrong with that account, and uh, basically, uh, there's just every second there's about ten new messages coming in, and I, I said, wow, that's kind of interesting. Uh, I looked at the stuff coming in, and I realized it was all keystroke data, and I had been saving it all to this big mail email file for this one user. Uh, so I took a, I wrote a little program that took all that data and split it up based on who it came from. Uh, what type of program it came from, whether they're typing into a Microsoft Word document or a, a email chat or um, uh, you know whatever software they're running, and I put it in this big database where uh, um, I had about three hundred thousand different people's information. I had uh, about five million messages that they sent back and forth, not to each other but just to anyone, and about uh, five million passwords to various websites online. So that's the kind of data this thing was gathering. And um, so I took all that data and made a website front end where you could go to the website and search to see if your account had been hacked. 
and uh, you could see if you're running a company, you could see all the passwords that were out there that people knew for your site. Um, so I, I, I did this kind of for fun and just to like uh, sort of make people aware of what was going on. Uh, there, um, I, I couldn't publish the information about all the stuff people were typing because it, I would have been sued for liability. I talked to a, a criminal computer lawyer about it um, who's friends with uh, 2600. And uh, uh, she's a she's a great woman. She uh, uh, told me what I could do legally and what I couldn't do, and that, that really helped me out. But uh, so all this information was up there, and these uh, this company that monitors worms and stuff saw that I'd made that saw that I made this website. They're called I don't know Para Protect or something, but they uh, they do security consulting for all these government sites and. Uh, like Ford and Motorola and NASDAQ Online and E-Trade, they do security for these other companies. So they sent out a bulletin to all these companies saying, go to monkeybrains.net and uh, find out if your site has any compromised passwords. And you have to send the guy $10 or, or to get a list of the passwords sent to you. So about 30 people did this and I sent them a um, list of all the passwords. And yeah, that part was kind of interesting just to see if I could make money off it. I, you know, thirty dollars doesn't even fairly doesn't cover my costs of running the monkey brains at all or the bandwidth it used, but it was fun to do. Um, but uh, the the FBI got kind of excited that I was putting this data online to uh, have people search it. Um, they, uh, they they you guys have probably heard of a program called Carnivore, and then uh, last fall they announced something called um, uh, Magic Lantern that was this program that would go on your computer, log all your keystrokes, and then send the data back to the government. Well, basically, this software was doing the same thing, the bad trans virus. So uh, in my mind, that was the bad trans virus, and they had sent it out. And uh, their way of getting the data back was to come to my house and say, hey, we, wanna, we want all that data you collected. And I said, no, I'm sorry. I can't give that to you. It's, uh, it'll infringe on people's uh, privacy rights. And so they're like, okay, uh, and they, they, they went away. And I said, if you get me a court order, um, I'll give you the data. And so then uh, a month passed by or so, and um, uh, some gentlemen came to my house in suits. And I, I'm not allowed to tell you if they had a court order. That's what they told me. Um, <laughs> maybe it wasn't even the FBI. Who knows? But uh, it, they, came, they came in, and it was, it was kind of a funny situation. I was uh, just getting ready to leave the house. I had my laptop on my back, in a backpack, and uh, I was walking down the stairs, and my sister was, uh, was uh, about to go out also, and I, I saw her shaking her head and saying no and locking the door at the bottom of the stairs. And then my cell phone rang, and my friend Geek Boy was, was calling, and he's like, uh, Rudy, they're here. And I looked down, and I saw my sister like, go away, go away. And I'm like, oh, well, it doesn't matter. They're, they probably don't when I've, yeah, I'm expecting them, they're not going to shoot me. But I went down there and I was really nervous for like five minutes. I was just like, oh shit, they're, you know, they're going to take me away. But um, uh, they, they took me to where my computers are and they, they copied all the data I'd gathered. And uh, it was fun hanging out with them. There's these four guys uh, um, that were armed and wearing black suits and black shoes and driving a black SUV just like you'd expect them to be. <laughs> <laughs> They're cookie cutter, uh, cookie cutter spooks, you know. Um, and uh, they, they were a little excited because when we got out at my, uh, the place where I had my servers, they were like, someone keyed our car. And I'm like, excellent. And they're like, what do you mean excellent? I'm like, oh, uh, I don't know. Maybe you ran into something on the way over here. And, <laughs> and then we're, we're, we're like, I'm, they're copying the date off my, off my server and my cell phone rings again. And it's another friend of mine who I won't tell you his name. And uh, <laughs> he's like, I keyed their car. <laughs> Wait, no, call me later. <laughs> But uh, that, that was a lot of fun. Um, and trying to remain calm and having, you know, and then my older sister called, like, are you all right? I'm like, I'm fine. And then I, I turned to one of the guys, I'm like, uh, could you talk to my sister? She's a little worried. And he's like, we have your brother. <laughs> like, he's fine. We'll return him later. It was a real deadpan. And that, that, was, that was hilarious, too. Um, they sort of had a sense of humor, but not really. They're more or less square. They, I don't know. Not to diss anyone from 
uh, Concord, but I think they all lived in Concord or something. Um, <laughs> I'm sure there's some cool people over there somewhere. Um, uh, yeah, so yeah, here's the here are the boppers. Uh, my dad does all these cool artificial light things and gives these guys different um, genetic algorithms sort of to run on, and this is the the pattern of what they do and. Uh, See the little red ones, they decided that they don't want to run far. The green ones decided that they run like all hell to live longer. And then there, there's certain rules like the red ones eat the blue ones, the blue ones eat the green ones, the green ones eat the red ones. That's the FBI and the Secret Service. The FBI and the Secret <laughs> Service. They all have their own strategies. <laughs> the Secret don't Service the don't. Ones. Hmm? Don't eat the brown ones. Yeah, the brown ones. <laughs> So uh, let's see, what else do I have to say about bad trans? Um, there's a lot of technical information you guys probably wouldn't be interested in. Uh, oh, the content was kind of interesting. So I had this database, and basically it's a cross-section of what everyone's been emailing for a month. And, um, well, a cross-section of our population, 300,000 people or something. And you, you could search on keywords. So my one of my roommates, Elliot, came in, and I'm like, hey, Elliot, I've got this cool database. What do you want to search for? And he's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, well, just pick a word. And so he says panties. And then we search for panties, and all these like porno chat messages come up that have been logged by this program. And uh, he got off on that. I mean, he <laughs> liked that. Uh, <laughs> uh, <and laughs> hey, Elliot. Um, and then uh, the, the, this guy, uh, um, Th Thompson from The Guardian came to interview me about it. And he's, I, I, I told him all about the, uh, w what I just told you guys. And he sort of got it. But then I'm like, well, you know, do you want to see the, the database? And he's like, no, I think I have enough information. I'm like, well, you can search for words in it. It's kind of cool. And then he's like, okay. And then he looked at it. I'm like, well, give me a, give me a word you want to search for. And then he started to understand it. It's kind of like a magic lantern. You rub and you get certain, something happens. And so he says, he thinks for a second, he's like, anarchy. And so we, then we search and we find something interesting about this high school student that wants to start an anarchy club in their high school. And then, um, that he, he's worried that they're going to get shut down by the school or something. And he's like, oh, I get it. That's kind of cool. So the big brother can really use this to monitor what people are doing. And uh, so that, that was fun to look at that. And then um, other, I, I let my other roommates look at it and stuff. And uh, ooh, I don't know what they searched for. I searched for like Saudi Arabia because it was right after the whole um, terrorist uh, fiasco. And uh, a bunch of stuff came up about different bank accounts in Saudi Arabia, and people were like, send four million to my bank account, here it is, and then it had their account number there and stuff like that, and it was being composed in a Word, Microsoft Word window for faxing it. They intended to fax the document and never put it on the internet. It wasn't in an email message or anything, but this, um, the keystroke logging data that the government likes to um, collect through this program called Bad Trans or Blue or uh, Magic Lantern or whatever you want to call it can get that type of that uh, granularity of information from you um, stuff that you never want to go on the internet that you would never intend to send over the internet will get sent to my email account and I'll read it <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, let's see uh, yeah it, it, and then just looking over all the messages, I was able to kind of get this uh, slice of what people are thinking about. A lot of people are at work, they're sending their resumes off to other people. A lot of people are chatting and they're like flirting left and right. And then there's other people that are can barely um, construct a, a sentence and they're sending back uh, messages to family and stuff like that. And it's, People are pretty simple. We're all thinking more or less the same thing all the time. It's not highly exciting. <laughs> Sometimes it is, but uh, yeah. How am I doing on time? Is that? Uh, I guess you've done about 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 half an hour. About half an hour. All right. Yeah. So, did, did you ever figure out who had the original account? Yeah. Do a few questions. Well, yeah. The the original account. Um, it was being re the email was being sent off to a Yahoo. It was a there's a. I have this sporting service on my server where you can set up an account and it'll send the mail to another account, sort of like a remailer thing, so you can sort of hide your identity. And it's being sent to a generic free Yahoo account, so um, I never found out who the individual was. So could you figure out who set up that account that was forwarding? 
Um, I was able to figure out the what computer they set it up from on the internet. Um, I can't remember where it was. Maybe in Georgia. I can't remember Atlanta. Who knows? How many gigs of data did you have? Oh, uh, I don't know. Let's see. I, I think like maybe ten gig, six six gigs of data or so. So. Had the Yahoo account disappeared, and that's why it was it was stuck at your thing, or was it still being forwarded on? Oh no! Like I have this program that uh, if one of those remailers gets more than fifty emails in half an hour, it shuts it off because that means they're either a spammer using that remailer. It's more for like fun, or if you want to, I don't know, have just another email account. It's not for um, spamming people or collecting virus data, um, which I didn't realize I wrote the protection in that would cover that as well. So it auto shut, it just shuts off the account, the forwarding, and starts collecting the data so that I can look at it and decide whether to turn the account back on or to shut it off. You still have the database? Yep. Are they here? <laughs> no, we're not yet. We can dial up and look at it. There's a secret place on the internet that you're not allowed to see. But I, I know where it is. <laughs> How'd you trace that post that you think came from the FBI? Oh, um, there's a, when people post things on your website, you can figure out um, what machine sent it, what IP address, and then you can, you can send these little packets that uh, let sniff slowly, hop by hop, all the way to where it came from. They, they, and they, you can follow the, the track of where they go, and you're like, okay, it went from my server to San, somewhere downtown San Francisco to San Jose, over to Phoenix, and then like, you know, like over to Atlanta, and then to Washington, D.C., and I can watch, I can see those little steps and figure out, oh, it probably came from the metro D.C. area. Rudy, when you when you first realized that you had people's uh, what they would consider personal uh, keystrokes coming to your computer, did you have any moments of thinking it wouldn't be right to look at this and I should just delete it or put it away somewhere and not look at it? I thought it wouldn't be right for the government to look at it. Um, I wasn't concerned about me infringing on other people's rights. I don't look at my customers' emails, but if other stuff happens to come my way, I'm. I think it's my duty to check it out and figure out what people are up to in the world. <laughs> is there a smoking gun that links Batrans to Magic Lantern, or is it just that they seem like similar? Um, it's just that they seem similar. I don't remember uh, any smoking gun article on that. They, uh, I don't know. I, the thing is, there was the, the FBI announced that uh, the, the Magic Lantern software, and then a week later this worm came about. So it, that means one of two things to me. Either one, the government had it and they, they set it loose, or two, some hackers or some other types of individuals or whatever, some programmers, saw that the FBI made this announcement and they're like, wow, that's a really easy thing to program. Let's just do it ourselves and show everyone in the world how um, easy it is to have all your secure, all your privacy uh, taken away from you. Is there any way of finding out what the feds did with the data they got from you? Uh, nope. Yep. Is, is there any way that an ordinary citizen can determine if he or she is under surveillance? You know, his, either his, his or her email or uh, internet site? Yeah, just uh, call this number. <laughs> yeah. You can call this number. <laughs> only, only I love feds. <laughs> um, but, uh, well, on the Batrans site, I made it public where you could search for your email address to see if your data was in there, and that way you could see if your account had been compromised, and I, allude, uh, I sort of hinted that the FBI was going to get this data, but I never published on the website that they actually did, because they told me not to publish that. And I decided, okay, I, you know, I kind of like running my ISP because I don't have to work for a, a big company. I don't really want to be shut down. So you, yes, you can go to the Batran site and search to see if you were affected by this particular virus. But if you've been affected by other ones, you just need to run some software to, uh, you know, uh, decontaminate your machine, antivirus stuff. Eh, I understand that there's some software out now that can de determine if you have a, a magic lantern that's occupying your hard drive. Is that true? Or? Well, actually, um, there, I, I think that uh, this, the, the Batrans one's detectable. If there's another version out there called Magic Lantern, it may or may not be detectable. The software companies were, I believe the government was talking to them and requesting for them to not detect 
their keystroke logging software. And um, I think in the end they decided they that it's an, most soft antivirus companies are uh, international and they don't want to do something that um, is biased towards the U.S. government. So in the end, they I think they're all going to detect uh, anything the FBI puts out there. Oh, they got foreign links. This this is. Why are we just throwing right customers to pay any bucks? Okay, so scroll down. Yeah. Down, down, down. <laughs> right next to the mug. Right next to the mug. Why are you selling hustler subscriptions? Why are they selling hustler subscriptions? Scroll down to make that square center when we get yes. So uh, there's this thing that came out came out in Hustler. And I just thought it was great. I was Oh, there's Jenna. <laughs> uh, I was I've been taking any uh, any media pictures of the first twins and copying them and putting them on my website. And Hustler happened to run something about um, uh, about Jenna. This could be you. Um, click on that text there, right there. In the, yeah, right there. Just click on that. Uh, I guess it doesn't work. Hey, Dad, try clicking on that little text text right there. Yeah. It doesn't work. All right, click on the text on the side. <laughs> All right, that's that. Are there any other websites you have? Um, Monkey Roots First Twins? Oh, pissgear.com. Is that what? It's a family affair. Dad, no. <laughs> Dad, no. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> it's not on this machine. <laughs> okay, I guess I don't have a copy of that. There's a, oh, a zine I did out at Burning Man last year. It was my first year. It's kind of fun. Uh, but I, I did this zine um, that was sort of anti-Burning... Mm, anti the rules at Burning Man. And there's just some ranting and ravings there. that uh, I, I wrote half of them and other people wrote the other half of them. But uh, there's some free scenes out there on the counter that you can grab. Um, I brought this Xerox machine out, and uh, it was broken, and I just worked on it for like four days and got it working. It's, it's and uh, <laughs> it, it seems like I got the Xerox machine working, I just started to write articles and uh, publish them. I, I was doing about uh, two a day. Good, good, good on another page. <laughs> That one's less funny this week than other weeks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, let's see. <laughs> so yeah, there's the general thing. Um, yeah. Hey, any other questions? <laughs>